Hello and welcome back to If This Is True. And today I'd like to talk to you about the complete con that is biomass. That's the stuff that we burn in uh, old coal plants and we say is really good for the environment and it'll help us get to this fictional, ridiculous concept of net zero. Nearly 7% of Britain's energy came from the burning of biomass in 2024. And we've got about 90 biomass power stations in the UK. Interestingly, um, what they burn to create power isn't always wood pellets. I didn't know that. Some burn used litter from chicken farms or even straw when it's an oversupply. But these contribute only a tiny proportion of the biomass energy produced. By far the largest percentage is from wood. Wood pellets burned by Drax Power Station, which makes up about 60%-ish, give or take, of the biomass electricity produced in the UK. I thought we'd have a look at what biomass actually is, how much it's costing us, and why it's sold to you as a net zero solution, because, hmm... It's as far from being green as you could possibly get. Drax just pumps out CO2 straight into the atmosphere. And if this is true, Drax power station is not the symbol of green energy it claims to be. Instead, it's a taxpayer-funded polluter wrapped up in the guise of sustainability. And it is of no benefit to taxpayers in this country at all. Taxpayers are the only reason this business still exists, making its shareholders very rich, which is very, um, I don't know, it's a bit North Korea. So let's talk about what it was then. Drax Power Station was once Europe's largest coal fire station, and it opened in 1974. At its peak, it generated nearly four gigawatts of power, which was enough to supply millions of homes. And the station, of course, was then a key employer with thousands of workers maintaining its coal-fired operations and supporting other local businesses that used to supply it. And family communities lived around it. It was important. But the UK's globally influenced push towards decarbonisation meant that Drax had to adapt. And I get that. Lots of people, hundreds, thousands of people, depended on Drax and its work. It was a profitable business, and I understand why they didn't want to close it down. Then, I don't understand why it exists now. In 2013, Drax transitioned to burning biomass, primarily wood pellets, that they sourced from North America. And the move came in response to stricter UK emissions targets and, of course, the looming threat of closure of coal plants. Biomass was framed by all of them, Drax and the government, as being a lifeline. But what they didn't tell you was that it was never going to be commercially viable, not without substantial taxpayer-funded government-guaranteed subsidies through what's known as renewable energy schemes. They're all a complete scam. Renewable energy schemes fund businesses that in the private sector could never survive. The transition, as I've said, would have been economically unviable without them. And our very own socialist, Ed Davey, I shit you not, the Secretary of State and Energy and Climate Change, was instrumental in establishing this subsidy framework under what's called the Renewable Obligation Scheme. And despite his current leadership of the Liberal Dems and his hysterical support for net zero ridiculousness, Ed Davey remains entirely silent on the utterly 
unenvironmentally friendly Drax and its enormous CO2 emissions. So let's do some science. You know that's my favourite bit. Biomass basically means any material used for energy, such as wood, that regrows. Hence why they use, I don't know, straw, shavings from uh, chicken farms. That's not a bad idea. I'm okay with that. Anything that can be regrown is called a biofuel. But Drax only uses wood pellets. And weirdly, they source almost all of those from southeastern United States and Canada. These wood pellets have often been criticized as coming from virgin forests, including biodiverse regions in Louisiana and British Columbia through Drax's own owned subsidy companies. Many reports, including from notable sources such as Panorama, reveal that old growth forests, that's those forests that weren't planted to cut down, they're just beautiful old ancient forests and they are critical for carbon capture and biodiversity, obviously, are being cut down to produce these pellets, not even for the American market, but to export to the UK. Okay, sidebar. Let's imagine, let's just imagine, if it were me, see, what I would do is I would set up subsidiaries in the US and in Canada to buy or produce wood pellets. And then, rather than compete in my own market, I'd set a really high price and sell them to my own company in the UK. Because I would know that UK taxpayers would cover any inflated cost of the pellets. And this way, I'd be guaranteed profits on both ends of the deal. I'd get profits on the pellets in America and Canada, and then I'd get profits on my production in the UK. Okay, but of course, then I'd get profit in the UK, burning it all, funded by UK taxpayers. Oh, and with absolutely no competition. Brilliant. Evil genius. Bond music, I think, Isabel. But of course, that's just what you could do. I mean, if you were a megalomaniac. If I, perhaps, was a substantial investor in a company like that, I mean, I have no idea if that's what they're doing, but it would be a really easy way of making profit. Anyway, Drax began to receive subsidiaries for biomass in 2013, paid for, of course, by us in our bills. And it's totaled over a billion pounds annually. Since the transition, Drax has received in the region of £10 billion in government support. And so it's worth it though, right? I mean, despite the subsidies, it is helping the environment. We are lowering our emissions, aren't we? Well, no, because Drax's CO2 emissions from biomass are roughly equivalent to when it burned coal. You see, burning wood releases, according to studies, which do vary, approximately 1,500 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of energy produced. And coal releases slightly less, at about 1,000 grams of CO2 released per kilowatt hour. This means that bioemissions are worse than burning coal per kilowatt hour. Now, of course, there are those that would argue that it isn't the same because trees can be regrown. But the number of trees being planted versus the number of trees being chipped for pellets is less. And it would also take 100 years, at least, for those trees to sequester and absorb enough CO2 to replace that that's made through burning. Each year, Drax imports about 7 million tonnes of wood pellets, making it the largest single importer of biomass in the UK. And the shipping 
of that amount of pallets all the way to the UK is estimated to be over 1.3 million tonnes of additional CO2 annually. We don't even use our own bio trees. We could easily have done that, but we don't. Leaving the CO2 emissions scandal to one side, because it is a bloody scandal, let's think about the environmental impact of producing the wood pellets in the first place. We've talked about it a little bit earlier. Well, deforestation is at the heart of biomass's environmental impact. Virgin forests, areas untouched by industrial activity, are actually being cut down and chipped all over the world. Think about it. Beautiful, aged, magnificent trees being chopped down and chipped. They're not being used to create incredible buildings or beautiful pieces of furniture or sculpture. They're just chipped as worthless nothing. And as a passionate lover of trees, I absolutely cannot support any kind of biomass that does that. It's the worst kind, the worst possible kind of hooliganism. And in British Columbia, investigative reports have found Drax's suppliers using rare old growth forests, vital for wildlife, habitats, carbon storage. Now, of course, Drax may not have known that these products were in their supply chain, but that's why we do checks. That's what they should have done. And in Louisiana, pellet mills there supplying Drax have been linked to clear-cutting wetlands and biodiverse forests. This has been reported by investigative journalists. And then there's the air pollution, because burning wood does release particulate matter, nitrogen oxide and other pollutants. These emissions are comparable to, if not worse, than coal emissions, certainly on a large scale like drugs. But they don't want you to look at that. Instead, they want you to think that domestic log burners are the problem and that they should be banned for environmental reasons, regardless of it being the cheapest way for citizens to keep warm. And all the while, industrial-scale biomass burning is allowed because it's green. We're completely being taken for fools. Without taxpayer subsidies, Drax would probably cease to operate. Seriously. Because many global investors only invested in the first place because profits coming from subsidies were guaranteed in exactly the same way they are for solar factories and wind factories. These subsidiaries account for a significant portion of their revenue, perhaps even as high as 70 or 80 percent. I don't know the exact figures because they're not published. Every year, though, Drax receives nearly a billion pounds in money from you. And it uses this money to help it cover costs. But then it gives the shareholders large dividends. Dividends are usually paid out to shareholders when a company is extremely successful and they have excess profits. Our subsidies aren't profits, but that's how they're being considered. And in 2024, shareholders of Drax received nearly £600,000 of your hard-earned money. And who are these shareholders? Well, it will come as absolutely no surprise whatsoever to tell you that major investors include BlackRock. Yet again, British taxpayers are subsidising the profits of major banks and investors, both in the UK and abroad. I don't believe power stations that burn biomass like Drax are particularly efficient. Certainly, they're not as efficient as coal, or my particular favourite, gas, because for every tonne of wood burned, only 20 to 25% of the energy is converted into electricity. The rest is lost. And by contrast, gas converts about 60%. And it's not like we're not sat on about... Oh, 200 years worth? The opportunity cost is staggering. 
The billions funneled into DRACs could have been invested into multiple other opportunities for Britain to become energy secure, including nuclear and, of course, fracking. And it is absolutely no good you all having a tantrum that I mentioned fracking. If you're so concerned about seismic activity, then you should go and protest outside Ed Miliband's door because he's going to attempt to bury 30 million tonnes of carbon a year in his mental carbon capture project, something never been done before and incredibly dangerous. I'll wait for you to come back to me and argue that one. So Drax's influence extends beyond its operations, though, because Drax spends a substantial amount of money lobbying for continued subsidies and favourable policies. Hmm, I wonder if this is some of the money we gave to them. Who knows? Drax is, of course, a member of the World Economic Forum and also the Alliance of Climate Leaders, all pushing for policies that will favour and will subsidise them and their companies, even though they could not possibly survive on their own without them. And of course, there's the continued support of the IPCC and its highly contested reports. Successive UK governments backtracked despite mounting evidence of its environmental and economic shortcomings. But why is that? Why did the Conservative government have a close relationship to Drax's leadership? Labour's support for net zero policies suggests it also sees Drax as a necessary component of the energy mix, even though the science doesn't support it. Globally, biomass burning faces enormous criticism. Environmental groups like Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth have labelled it a false solution. Scientists warn that reliance on biomass undermines efforts to reduce CO2 emissions. But we still doggedly carry on. When all the evidence shows it's a waste of taxpayers' money, it doesn't reduce CO2, and it devastates areas of forests when it promised it wouldn't. And if this is true, Drax isn't the beacon of sustainability it claims to be. It's a taxpayer-funded, carbon-pumping relic, masquerading as green energy that we're paying for. Where is the honesty and accountability? Subsidies aren't delivering any real environmental benefits and they're of no benefit to you at all. In my opinion, and in the opinion of many others, they're simply lining their corporate pockets. Anyway, that's the end of my massive rant on biofuel. It's no different to my other rants on net zero bollocks. Anyway, it's a tale of deceit and fakery. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe. We'll do it all again. We might run out of net zero soon. I'm gonna have to think about something else. There is loads. Thank you.